Just to Your Mouse, A Call to Arms by Mike Oren. One too many clicks. Sorry. OK. <laughs> so How to Kill a Mouse. These are, this is my outline. I just renamed it. Maybe more interesting. Uh, so first, we've got Understanding Your Enemy, Mice versus Tablets. We've got Beat Up Wimps, why traditional UI messages don't work on tablets. Arm Yourself, UI Design for the Tablets. That's where I'm going to be focusing most of the time. And Take the Word to the Streets, my conclusion. So here is your enemy. Exterminate it. So the problem with mice, first of all, it's got relative positioning, so it requires cognitive processing. So I mean, it's not like a pen where you can just point and click or just point at something with your finger. You have to actually map the movement of the mouse with the movement of the cursor on the screen. Um, it also requires a graphical cursor, which can be a problem because the cursor by default is kind of small. So someone who's elderly might have a problem tracking or someone with a uh, visual impairment might have problems tracking it. And it's also really easy to move the mouse a little bit too much, especially if you're having problems mapping the movement of the mouse to the cursor, to easily move it off the screen so you can't even see it, so you don't know where it is. And that can be a problem. It also does not allow fine motor movement, so you can't like draw something with a mouse. I'm sure some of us have probably tried doing something like just MS Paint or something, just trying to draw. It really doesn't work too well. Um, and you can't do like handwriting with it, so you can't like sign your name with someone else. You can try, but it's not going to work out too well. It's also limited pretty much to pointing and clicking. That's what it was made for. It was made to work with um, icons and like lists and stuff where you just point stuff and click. So, not to mention the fact that it eats all the cheese in the house, you know, the other type of mouse. So what mice do well? I mean, I, I like to grip on the mouse, but I have to admit that some stuff it does really well. For one, it's minimal body movement. To move the cursor around doesn't take that much movement to move the mouse. I mean, you move it a little bit, and it could, on the screen, it moves a lot. So like for a 20-inch display, then you just have to move it a little bit. You don't have to reach all the way across the 20-inch display to get to the point you want to go to. It's also really great at pointing. I mean, you can't argue with that. The mouse is by far the best for pointing and stuff because it can stay in one place just by letting go of it. It's not like a finger where you have to hold your arm out there and just keep on pointing. But that's really about it. There's not too much else about the mouse that makes it really great. I mean, it does some other stuff, but pretty much what it's good at. So the tablet is basically the mouse advanced. So I'm sure a mouse can do, a tablet can do too. So it can point and click which is all a mouse can really do. And the tablet can do that. But there are some exceptions I'll talk about later, because I don't want to be too biased. Um, also, it allows fine motor movement. So of course, with the tablet, it's really great for artists. Artists like it, and surgeons like it, um, because it allows them to actually use their hand to like, write out prescriptions and draw pictures, stuff that they can't do with a mouse, because it just doesn't allow that type of control over it. It also uses absolute positioning. There's no cognitive processing to it. You just look at something, you point at it um, with your finger, well, with either your finger or with a pen, and you just click on it. Not a big deal. Uh, and also, you don't have to have a cursor, although for various reasons you might want to have one anyway, because it's good to have a cursor for let you know what tool you're using. So if you're in a drawing application and you have different tools, you want cursor to kind of show that because of physical pen isn't exactly going to transform your hand, although that would be really cool. So you, basically, the tablet can point and click, which mouse does, and also allows you to write and gesture. So there are some limitations of the tablet. Again, I don't want to be too biased on this. Reaching is required. If you've got a really large display, say like uh, the cave, any of the cave displays, just one of those, I mean, that's really large. You wouldn't be able to reach that. For something like that, you definitely need something that does relative positioning, not absolute, because you couldn't reach the entire display. Um, also, it doesn't allow for pinpoint accuracy a lot of times. Your hand just isn't as steady just holding there, especially some people have like uh, motor tremors and stuff, and that just won't work as well. Uh, so if you want pinpoint accuracy, you really want to go with the mouse or something else that you can just leave it and not touch it. So, uh, and 
comes in that allows a little bit more precision to movement. So, I mean, maybe you shouldn't throw away your mouse just yet, but so I think the tablet's the way to go. So next we're going to be talking about beating up wimps. So here we are. So this is a pen in a mouse world. So here we have uh, an application that was designed originally for mice, and then Microsoft modified it to make it more accessible for people with tablets. But there are some serious problems with the design of this system for a tablet. Uh, does anybody want to point out some possible flaws with this system? Handwriting. What about the handwriting? Might not be easy to read. I can usually never read. You, you can't even read, read your own handwriting? Well, okay. Professors have used them for notes. It's difficult to read what's written on a tablet. Okay. Anything else? Good luck picking all those little icons. That was what I was going to bring up. So it requires reaching for one. So if you've got a larger display, you have to reach up there. And also, it's unnatural to pick those little icons, like uh, he was pointing out. And uh, over on the right, you'll see that menu thing. You have to drop it down and drag, the, drag your pen down to the option you want. That's kind of annoying and not really natural for a pen to do. So I mean, we tried. But they failed. So there's also the Apple movement, since I picked up Microsoft to have to pick on Apple too. So this was um, Apple's first foray into like a tablet pen based system. This is their design for the Newton. Uh, this is just one screen. This was the screen I found on Wikipedia. But as you can see, again, they've got a bunch of those little icons to pick at. Um, I mean, it's got a smaller display, so you don't have to worry about reaching. But then they also have like, um, the volume control, if you can see it in the lower left over there. And you have to drag that left and right. That's kind of OK, but it's kind of small, so it would be kind of hard to be too precise on that. So WIMPs, as we all know, are Windows icons, menus, and pointers. The problem with this is that last part. The keyword here is pointer. All of these, this whole paradigm is designed around the idea of pointing. And because of that, you can't really, that doesn't work too well on the with a pen. You can do it, but unless you're going to make the icons resizable so people can, can like control it more, um, then it doesn't really work. And the menu system is really just a bad idea altogether for pens. I mean, they, again, they work, but it's really an unnatural way of doing things. Windows are fine, though. You can do Windows. So finally, we're going to talk about how to actually design these UIs for tablets. OK, so tablets are pens. What do they do best? They don't do point and clicking the best. I mean, when you're using a pen, like a regular pen, not a tablet PC, are you pointing and clicking and stuff? No. You're like drawing, you're writing, you're gesturing. And that's what pens do. That's what they do well, and that's what they should be doing in terms of UI design. So um, by continuing, by having the user interface in a way that you naturally use a pen, drawing and handwriting and gesturing, when you reduce the break in workflow, because by going from drawing in an art application to suddenly pointing and clicking at stuff, it really breaks the workflow. You have to kind of think in a different way than you do when you're just drawing and gesturing. But gestures do have their drawbacks. So gestures are the equivalent of keyboard shortcuts. Power users love keyboard shortcuts. It helps them get things done quickly. Novices hate keyboard shortcuts because you never know them. Even people who have been using computers for many years don't know keyboard shortcuts. And even a lot of the experts don't know all of the keyboard sh shortcuts. So by doing gestures, you're requiring people to remember these gestures. And while the key is to design gestures that are natural, like drawing down to move down a page or drawing down to like lower the font size, while that works some of the time, sometimes you can't always make it gesture natural and will require user memorization. So, but this does increase speed. Instead of having to reach, you can just gesture anywhere or gesture on, a, uh, on like an icon that follows you. Um, there's also a learning curve involved with learning the gestures, just like there's a learning curve involved in uh, learning uh, keyboard shortcuts. So some of the solutions to this problem, 
are Jadrix, which are gesture-driven icons. I've actually implemented a version of this myself at one point. And uh, video menus, which are pretty much the same thing as hierarchic marking menus, which I had all of you read about. So these are designed to reduce the memorization requirements and lower the barrier to new users. Because they're designed to give contextual clues and also uh, give kind of memory cues to the user uh, to kind of help them learn these new gestures. So I'm going to start out with Jedrix. So with Jedrix, you've got the advantage of fewer gestures. The way Jedrix works is you've got um, a panel of icons, but they're larger icons, not like those tiny ones that you saw in Microsoft Word. And on these icons, you draw on them. And each icon is uh, context sensitive. And Jedrix were designed to use a single stroke uh, gestures to kind of like the Palm Pilot uses the graffiti alphabet. That would be the same type of thing. Well, I guess a new graffiti do, is, two, is multiple strokes, but the original one was just one stroke. So it was designed to do the one stroke thing because it's less movement, um, it's more natural, it doesn't break the flow as much. So the icons then provide a memory cue um, because if you see a uh, navigation icon, so if you see something that shows like a turning page or something, then you know that if you want to go down a page or also have it except multiple ways, because some people might think instead of going down a page, they might be thinking, turn the page, like, go, go to the right. So that way you can just gesture down or to the right, and it'll go to the next page. So I mean, that's a lot more natural, and you've got that cue of the page to like remind you um, that that's what it's for. And because, it, because you've got these icons, you can have, and they're context sensitive, you can have uh, an icon or one gesture to do multiple things. So I gave you the example of the page. Um, you can also do the font size. Uh, and again, natural gesturing is important. So big, by reducing the number of gestures to memorize, um, and also by making things context sensitive, you can have more likelihood of doing natural gestures. If they're not context sensitive, then the down couldn't be used for lowering the font size. It could only be used for changing the page. So video menus are, and hierarchical marking menus. So with these, there's less movement, uh, more natural than dragging through drop-down menus. So I, I consider video menus more of a replacement for the menu system. Jedrick's more as a replacement for the icon system. So uh, like I showed you with uh, the Microsoft Word application, you've got that menu that you have to click on and drag down and drop through. So with this, you can just, you, instead of going all the way up to the top, you just it's the only way you can gesture anywhere, and if you hold or sometimes it's right click, then the actual um, visual key will open up. There's only a circular menu system with, with either icons or text and or text that will let you know what your options are. So because you can either hold for a second or two or right click, it's easy for novices to like know what their options are because they're all right there in that circular menu. It's also uh, built in gesture. Built in learning for the gesture recognition, or for learning the gesture, sorry. Uh, because as they do these, as they go through this menu and do the gesture, they eventually learn that they don't have to hold or right click in order to actually get the gesture to be recognized. They can just go through and do the gesture and not have to wait for the pop, wait for the radio menu to actually pop up. Um, and that can also be adapted to mice. Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen the Firefox video menu extension, but it's another, another mouse gesture one. It's not as popular as the main mouse gesture for Firefox, but it is a radio menu that gives you the options um, that sh kind of show you how to go through the gesture. So that's kind of nice. Um, and it can be done with mice because it's normally just about eight radial, eight directions, eight cardinal directions. So up, down, left, right, and like all the corners. So. I mean, that's an advantage because that way, if you're designing an application, you don't have to do something special just for the tablet. You can have it work for both. So finally, we've got take the word take the word to the streets. So tablets can do what mice do. Um, I mean, they can point and click. That's what mice do. Um, but tablets are technically inferior to mice at pointing and clicking. I will admit that, um, although it pains me. Uh, using interfaces. Um, Designed for mice on tablets will slow slash prevent the adoption of tablets. Um, one of the reasons I mentioned in my wiki why a lot of the early 
tablet and pen-based systems failed was they just didn't do anything special for uh, pen-based systems. They just took the traditional WIMP uh, setup and gave you a pen. That was about it. So if you want some, a tablet-based system to succeed, you need to actually design applications toward that system. Also, the design uh, for tablet you need to design your tablet applications for tablets, not just take what you have and add tablet stuff in, which is kind of what Microsoft did, but they did a decent job of integrating tablet-based stuff in. Like they've got that whole gesture thing that <coughs> sorry, they've got the gesture thing that takes over the whole system, system-wide gesture. So I mean, that kind of works, and they did add stuff to like. The office program and they added it throughout, and they also had some additional applications. So they did a decent job, but I mean, even now the tablet adoption rate's pretty low. So I think if we design more towards tablets specifically, adoption rate would be a little bit higher. So that's why I say if you build it, they will come. If you build applications designed for tablets, more users will start using it. As they see, it's more natural and it's easier easier for them to use, and it's faster for a lot of things. And eventually the mouse will die, hopefully. Especially after things like uh, multi-touch systems come up, because I mean, then you've got all sorts of ways of uh, doing gestures that don't just involve one stroke. So it's even easier to design more natural gestures. So that's all I have. Any questions? How, how prevalent, how, uh, what's the, you know what the portion of uh, Tablets sold is compared to laptops or desktops. I didn't look up exact sales figures, but I know um, that it's significantly lower. Um, I'd say it's a small fraction of the market. I mean, all all major manufacturers now have at least one tablet, although Apple still is slow. But supposedly they're coming out with one next year. But you don't. So, but it's it's still pretty low for the adoption rate. And Vista has tablet features built into it now, which it didn't before. So, go ahead. So is the tablet, you know, you're referring here, I, I take it to the tablet, laptop. Yeah. Those are tablet as peripheral computer. So that's what I've seen before. Are you talking about like uh, the USB one where you don't like reattach exactly. it, but there's no right screen? Exactly. Touchpad. Touchpad, yeah. I mean, that. Sort of works, but the, you have to do some cognitive mapping. I mean, it's absolute, so that, well, sort of absolute. If the screen sizes aren't the same, then you're not going to be truly absolute. But still, if you were to touch in the lower left hand corner of the touchpad, it would be the lower left hand corner of the screen. Um, so I, it, there's less mapping, but there's still some mapping involved. So it's really not, not how I would suggest using it. <laughs> but. I mean, it still allows you to do all that stuff with tablets, too. It's just the mapping's not there. It says, I need something about how it works for the function of right click on the mouse. Um, right click for the pen. Uh, some, some, it depends on the manufacturer. Some tablet manufacturers do a right click if you kind of click and hold, or if you touch and hold for like two seconds. Some of them do it by actually having a second button on the pen. Yeah. So. Well, I think it's a, Zero's question was uh, about the pen. When you talk about tablet, tablet was your header. Yeah. You're really talking about pen-based interfaces yeah. that don't have screens. What? Pen, like a pen-based interface that doesn't have a screen. But yeah. A new pen out there, Logitech. Oh, and, uh, I haven't seen that one. The buttons in the calculator and get the system to report back and answer it. Yeah, that I haven't seen, but that would be pretty neat. Um, so I was just wondering whether or not all of your criticisms really just are applying more to the pen interface, not tablets per se, where you have that visual feedback. Yeah, I mean, I was mostly applying it to, I mean, a lot of this can go towards like just pen. In general, but I was focusing more on the tablet in terms of being able to actually have the vi visual feedback too. Um, I, don't, I don't know 
exactly what your question was. It seems like the, a lot of the limitations are, are restricted to the nature of the tenants, and gestures, and so on. Yeah. And really, it was secondary the fact that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's kind of. Here, I mean, in some cases there were some limitations, like and you can't do radio not in all directions. Yeah. Your hands in the box. Yeah. Yeah, it really was a, it was an exchange. So okay. It seems like it's more general what you're talking about. Any kind of community based interface. Yeah. Yeah, the gestures were fairly general for any pen based uh, interface. I mean, the radio menus aren't because, I mean, the radio menus are designed, at least the way, I mean, I'm used to them. There's actually a visual thing, and that helps users to actually learn it. I mean, you, you, because otherwise it's just a gesture because there's nothing that you're seeing. So. Well, I want to ask the question. I was going to say, presumably, is there, is there a difference between touch-based interfaces where you use your finger and pen-based interfaces? Um, is it both? No, I, I was viewing them as both the same, but I was only, for this, I was only looking at the single-touch ones because multi-touch are fairly new. I think just the last two years and not much software has actually been developed for them. So that would be really fun to develop for. Um, <laughs> But, yeah. You have a lot more precision. You're using your fingers to guide it. Well, you, you do, yeah, you do have more precision. Um, with the pen, you can be, you can have more of that pin, you can be closer to the pinpoint accuracy that the mouse provides. Um, but the mouse is still the most precise, I think. But if the interface was to have, a, like, a zooming uh, icons, it'd be like, yeah. I think that would be I think that would improve things a lot too. Um, I mean, like Apple has their icons on the back here. They get larger when you go over there. They, I mean, just something as simple as that. Although I think Apple might actually have a patent on that technique, but that's. touch screen, so you touch one location, and that sort of sets where the cursor is, and you use your other finger, and you make fine adjustments locally to where the cursor is. Yeah. And then you can have your precision. I mean, yes. then, then you can finally replace the mouse officially, but. <laughs> yes. No, I remember reading, I don't know if it was in the paper or just the wiki, and you said that the fact that the mouse has just been so popular hanging around, that's why interfaces haven't, haven't changed. Do you think, I mean, how's, are we going to have to force the tablet on people before, you know, good? Well, I mean, I don't think it necessarily has to be the tablet, but I think we do have to get rid of the mouse if we want to change interfaces, because I think right now we're kind of stuck in the mouse world. The mouse can't do much more than point and click. So if the mouse were to like, suddenly evolve, which hasn't happened in like 40 plus years, um, then we'd be OK. But I mean, with the mouse just being what it is, just being a point and click device, our gurus are all designed around that. And we need to get rid of the mouse in some way, shape, or form. 